Okay, we're going to call our uh, meeting to order. If everybody would please rise for the invocation. Who's got the invocation? Mr. Miller. I do, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we implore your divine direction to be instilled within us. May we be sensitive of thy bidding, obedient to thy will, prevail, prevail always in truth, ever pursuing peace and righteousness with our fellow man and Almighty God. Amen. 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 Everybody please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Kellums, would, uh, sitting in for Mr. Porter, would note that all three trustees are present. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from August 2nd. Do we have a motion? I move we approve the minutes from August 2nd, 2022. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Mr. Kellums. Mr. James. Aye. Ms. Schwagman. Aye. Mr. Weed. Aye. Next item on the agenda is our gas aggregation program. We have with us tonight Dan Dieters from Energy Alliance. Dan, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. This doesn't look like it's going to go very long. You're not going to get me on a date night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. So last Monday, we sent over the contract to uh, uh, Mr. Kellums, and we signed. We executed at 83.9 cents. A little bit higher than we thought, but I got a note today from uh, somebody that works in the industry. It says the first quarter of this year was the most volatile quarter in natural gas in 20 years. And they think the second quarter of this year is going to be the first quarter for volatility. Mm -hmm. So what happened was we saw a dip that we could take advantage of for at least the, the, the short two-year term, get through winter, and then we're still pricing beyond. And if, it, if the market would fall, we can blend that back through okay. like, most likely after the winter. Mm -hmm. I think that you'll see next month's Duke GCR price, it's not really a comparison because they get their money back, as you all know, no matter what they, right. how much they have to go out and buy. They'll go out and buy it and charge next month if they had to pay a lot more for it. Um, so so their, their price next month, next month is $1.22 and change, I think. So we will get, we'll start in October. I think October reads, not October reads, I think it's uh, November reads for October gas. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah. So, so that's where we are right now. Um, I do. I mean, it was hard for, it was kind of hard for me to swallow. But I do remember when I started back in this business in '07. We our first price we ever put out was 88 cents. So and that and that did pretty well mm -hmm. and at the time. And then as we moved forward and the market kind of changed, we were able to step it down along with the. With the with that number, so um, with that, um, I'm happy to take any questions that anybody has. Anybody have any questions? Uh, not about the gas price. I mentioned to you before the meeting, though, the debit cards that were issued from the energy overcharge from the supplier before expired at the end of July, and some are still outstanding. Can you give us an update on what's going on? Yeah, happen? so I'm glad you reminded me about it tonight. I'm going to have them generate that list, and I'll send it over to Mr. Kellums and and. Uh, We'll, f we'll figure out a way to get it on the website and, and, and make, let people know that whatever the procedure is, I'll figure out what it is to get it back uh, for folks if they still want to do that. But as far as that goes, um, I, I, it, I, it, it slipped my mind because we've been doing this. We've been doing this, trying to get this thing all in a row. It's 26 communities, by the way, all did it. And it's, it's not like you can just push the button be for this much gas. It's got to be available too. Mm -hmm. So, and we're in record. Not to go back to, it, but we're in record. Uh, our storage is at is at five year low right now, and the production's just not ramping up as quickly. So, I think we're going to be good to the winter. I think our price versus the Duke GCR is going to be competitive. And the good thing is, ours is fixed. So, people are going to know what they're going to pay, and it's not going to be, you know, seventy five cents in December and. Dollar ninety in January, right. you know. So that's that's, and we never know, but but we we can figure we can get some of the forwards and and some of the fees and kind of try to calculate that price. But it's still a guessing game. No, I think I think when you speak to the the volatility in the first quarter and second quarter, that's exactly what we're seeing in the in the, in the commercial world. It's 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 been 
it's been the wild west for the, for the last six months and and uh it's it's challenging to try and predict what the future is going to hold but you know to your point with the low reserves there's only one way for it to go which is which is up so if we've been able to take advantage of a dip i think that's fantastic and yeah. it'll benefit everybody for sure thanks any other comments questions dan thanks buddy appreciate, appreciate it. it sorry how about too long <laughs> enjoy date night <laughs> i will <laughs> thanks dan Next item on the agenda is public comments. Do we have any? No, sir. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Sheriff Patrol Report. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next item on any questions? Next item on the agenda is EMS Fire Report. We received a $2,000 donation from Lightel Chemical, and they requested that we put it toward the uh, good of the community, so we told them we would be purchasing smoke detectors. We have a we have a pretty big turnaround on giving away smoke detectors, so um, we'll we'll purchase those and and post it out there. If you, anybody that needs them, they can uh, they can get them from us. Perfect. So and then the only thing is uh, real quick, September I won't be at the next meeting. I'll be on vacation, but the St. Savior Festival, and we'll we'll be in, uh, involved in that golf ball drop with we'll the ladder okay. on okay. the Sunday the 12th. Okay. Questions. Next item on the agenda, roads maintenance and recreation report. Mr. Kellams. Well, we've been busy in the parks since our last meeting. Uh, we had the car show that, considering the weather, was a good turnout. Uh, you know, some of the guys don't like to bring their uh, cars out if it's cloudy. So uh, <laughs> it was very questionable that day, but it, it was a good turnout. Uh, Soul Pocket just played this last uh, weekend, and... Uh, it was a, a very good turnout. Uh, food trucks were there. They did well. They seemed to be happy and <coughs> looked like everybody really enjoyed it. Uh, we have Spies in Disguise coming up on the 27th at dusk at McDaniel Park at 11797 Old Soulsman Road. So uh, bring your families out for that. Also, uh, if you remember, uh, I think it's been a couple years ago now when we started with the Cooper Creek Collaborative with Hamlin County and uh, you know working in the, the creek in the back of Bechtold and putting the everything together for them so we now have a free tree giveaway that is going to happen here at the administration building uh, residents can register for that until September 1st they have to live in the watershed district which uh, Bechtold Park is basically the center of uh, so they're they're gonna have a free they they can go on their uh, go on their website to register for a tree register by the first and uh, that they, they'll be giving those away. Uh, so I, on uh, September eighth, they're going to have a seminar on how to plant and care for your tree, and on September tenth is when you're going to pick the tree up from ten to two here. And uh, it seems to be a good program because, you know, with them being young trees, they're also giving deer protection with them and fences and everything. Good. So I, I think it's, it's going to be a very good program. Hoping to see a lot of interest with that. Along with that, uh, also, if you don't live in the district of the Cooper Creek Collaborative, the Hamlet County Conservation District is also having a tree and shrub sale that same day here at this location and also at the engineer's office on, on Burlington. So people can register for that. Uh, it's $23 for a tree. Is that on the 10th? The that end? is on the 10th also, okay. yes. So if you don't live in the collaborative, uh, you still get a very good price on a tree, you know. So it seems to be a good How program. How much the trees? $23. Can't beat it. Do we know what kind they are? They have quite a few species. If you oh. go on their website uh there's probably about 10. now for the collaborative the species are, are more uh there's only a few they got about four or five native uh, to ohio that are, they're all native to ohio they're all good for the environment good for most of them produce fruit or nuts you know they have a wildlife uh they have to be beneficial to the wildlife also what's the website it's hamlin county conservation district so those trees will look good anywhere except in the right of way, right? Yes, <laughs> right. they will not be going in the right of way. <laughs> not, to, uh, <laughs> not with berries and nuts and 
Do we want to post for this on the website and on Facebook? Yes. All right, we'll do that. We, I believe we already I think have. We are, yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, yeah. okay, great. I think it's been circulating. Yeah, that's ahead of the game. Okay. So other than that, uh, if you've noticed when you pulled in, if you went around back, uh, the playground is under progress. Uh, that, that, so. Uh, they've got one of the pieces up already, the other one about halfway. We're hoping in, in about two or three weeks to have that completed. So it'll be done just in time for our fall session of soccer and football. It, it's really going to be nice. And uh, the transform platform that was ordered from for Bob Meyer that we finally found has come in. So that is will be put on soon so we can uh, open that up also. That's That's been down for quite a while because we couldn't find the parts anywhere. So lots of things going on in the parks. A lot of people are really enjoying our parks. Other than that, our roads, our projects are moving along great. Larch is moving. Uh, our project over here in Kenwood Meadows, uh, Prus is about to finish up all the concrete work, if not the end of this week, beginning of next week, and then we'll be into uh, milling the roads, doing asphalt repairs and uh, late some well probably it won't be late some it'll be in the fall we'll be paving nice. okay so anything that's else all i have unless somebody has a question questions uh just a few things real quick i want to give a shout out to jason petty for all the hard work he's put in and getting some of these things to happen the auto show music in the park events and so on he's out there working on the weekends doing these things so i just wanted to recognize him for doing that i know he works hard at that and his his crew your crew is doing that too um, also, just to report to the public, I, I'd ask uh, if we had some idea what the street food expo that occurred in June had uh, cost the township, and uh, the number was under $10,000 in the end for the township's input and all that, somewhere in the mid nines. So that was a good value for what we got there with the music playing there, certainly. Um, so I was happy to see that. Yes. Tracy, I'll give you a heads up. I, I thought we might see someone tonight about this, but in our next meeting, we might. I understand some people in. Heidmeyer and other neighborhoods have questions about the frequency of Rumpke's recycling and whether they can uh, encourage Rumpke to step that up. I know you were involved in negotiating with Rumpke to get um, recycling included in the trash plan for residents, and I don't know if it's practical to step it up or if there are mm -hmm. other alternatives, but we may be hearing about that soon. I don't know okay. if you've heard anything about that already. I have not heard a word about it. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks. Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you. Planning and zoning? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, small report tonight. Uh, just an update. Last week, uh, Zoning Commission heard two cases. Uh, first one was for landmark recovery. That was case number 2022-11Z. Um, that case was tabled. Uh, the Zoning Commission had some concerns regarding um, parking calculations and availability on site. Uh, and so the applicant requested that be tabled until uh, they had an opportunity to review the, the site and uh, address those issues. Other item, uh, it was a PUD-1, so it won't, it won't be in front of this uh, board, uh, but ARCU up on uh, East Kipper Road, uh, they were approved for an expansion of their, their manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, they do um, uh, flat metal. Uh, stamping and uh, and processing up there. So, okay, did it. That's all I have. Any questions? Uh, question again. I know I'd emailed you about this, but uh, the auto shop in Deer Park. Uh, apparently, there's some parking problems again on residential streets. I think you mentioned mm -hmm. there's been some type yep. of citation work going on already as to that. Any yes. Uh, so any Deer Park Auto has. Uh, uh, has been in violation with uh, with zoning and the fire department uh, for at least the last three months. Uh, we've been we've been working with them to, to clean up. It's been a very slow process, but there has been some constant progress with them. We've had some slips. It's a little frustrating, but we are trying to work with them. Um, actually, our our new uh, law firm, official law firm, was able to provide me with uh, some documentation that we. Uh, we didn't have prior uh, regarding a, a, a past settlement agreement. So uh, I think we've got some more, more teeth for enforcement through the courts. Um, as far as fire code violations, Doug Morath has been doing uh, 
uh, monthly, if not bi-weekly, uh, inspections on that, as, along with Kevin. And I believe the Hamilton County Public Health uh, Agency is, is also involved in it. So a lot going on. Uh, I realize the, the concern on next door had to do with parking on streets. And that's one of the things that we have no way to regulate that. Uh, so if it's a if it's a junk vehicle, by all means report it to us, and uh, you know we'll work through getting a uh, an inoperable vehicle off the off the road. But we have to be able to prove that. If they sit there too long, can we chalk those? No, no. there was a court decision a few years ago. Yeah. We we have no. You would essentially have to sit there for 24 hours and watch the car. Well, I will say, say uh, Roger being called into the office today said he realizes there's. A lot of traffic on next door about it and he wanted us to let the board know that he is uh, rectifying that immediately so Good. we'll see how that goes uh, okay. and the last item on that uh, issue is uh, mr. Bean's son has has reached out to us within the last few days uh, to establish a better line of communication so he's going to be getting involved with um, improving the site Okay, I have one other question for Mr. Miller also. A resident had uh, emailed all the trustees this past week about solar panel placement on houses and changes in state law affecting homeowners associations not being able to prohibit those in certain instances, but mm -hmm. asking whether the township had uh, any interest or reason to regulate those. Do we even have the ability to do that? Uh, we could. Uh, I actually have written uh, you know, solar panel regulation for, for other communities. Uh, my my professional opinion on it is that un unless you're looking at a historic district or something to that effect, I don't necessarily think we should, um, but it's certainly a conversation we can have and it's a policy decision of the board. Um, you're either gonna have roof mounted, uh, roof mounted arrays, which if it's on the house, uh, would theoretically be treated like any other mechanical equipment or ancillary equipment on a uh, you know, satellite dish or um, air conditioner unit, what have you, or you can have a freestanding array in your your backyard or side yard. Those we would regulate like any other accessory structure, uh, just like a shed, and it would be you know subject to the same placement as uh, you know, it, like I said, any other accessory structure. Well, we may be hearing more about that from people. Yep. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Law director report. Nothing from the law director's office tonight. No, no. <laughs> nice report. <laughs> Administrator report. Uh, so the first thing I have is we uh, received back from the state the results from our JEDS audits from 20 and 21. Very successful audits, no findings, no exceptions. So I figured that the uh, board would like to know that. So first, uh, so I have a couple resolutions tonight, both have to do uh, with uh, wages. So the first one I have is a resolution amending the rate of pay for a township employee. Do we have a motion? I move we approve the resolution as presented. A second. Motion, second, any further discussion? Mr. Kellums. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weed. Aye. The second one is a resolution amending resolution 2022-001 to increase the rate of pay for part-time firefighters to $21 per hour and dispensing with the second reading. I move we approve the resolution <coughs> as presented. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Kellams. Mr. James. Aye. Ms. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weed. Aye. That is all I have, sir. Uh, purchase order is over 5,000. Looks like we have one. We have one. And this is uh, for our uh, the sort of project for Montgomery Road sidewalks. Uh, there are some easements that are going to be needed because the right of way is not large enough. So this is per PO number 22-272 for Dennis A. Zaccardi and Associates LLC for $5,600. Okay. 
I move we approve the purchase order number 22-272. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Kellum. Mr. James. Aye. Ms. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Anything else? No, sir. Any questions? Uh, next item is fiscal officer report. I don't know if we had any numbers uh, in Rob's absence or not. Yes, we have uh, cash receipts in a total of $159,568.30 and disbursements in the amount of $95,545.05. We have a motion to approve. I move we approve. I second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Kellums. Mr. James. Aye. Ms. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weed. Aye. Could you repeat the disbursement amount, though, please? $95,545.05. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is trustee comments. Tracy, you? Um, I do not have any this evening other than uh, con congratulations to a very wary Parks and Recreation team for a very busy, busy month, busy few weeks. Um, well done. Okay. Anything for you? Uh, yes, I already gave a shout out to Jason Petty for his hard work on uh, parks items and for the crew doing the same. I also want to thank Beth Gunderson, who's behind the scenes here in the township, but accomplishing many things. Um, I appreciate her patience and things uh, she gets together for all of us, for all of our employees, and I just want to thank her publicly for that. So thanks, Beth. That's it. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is announcement changes. There, there doesn't appear to be any changes, uh, but you can check our, uh, our meeting events uh, calendar on the website for any further changes that may take place. If there's no other business, we'll take a motion to adjourn. I uh, move we adjourn. A second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. 7.27.